Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, we're back to working on the metal planer restoration today, and uh, this is going to be a scraping video. I know many of you guys are getting to the point where you're complaining about my scraping videos, saying I'm doing too many of them, but like I've said many times before, what you guys get to watch me do is whatever I'm working on in the shop. Today we got a scraping job. I am happy to say that I think this is going to be the last bit of scraping that has to be done on that metal planer restoration. I'm sure we'll have more down the road as we get into other machines, but this is the last little bit that needs to be done. And uh, I need to get it knocked out so that we can go ahead and get this part finished up. We're gonna be scraping the uh, dovetails on the cross slide. And that's gonna be kind of an interesting little setup here. Not only do we have to scrape both sides, but we need to check for parallelism. So there's gonna be some interesting uh, uh, measurements going on in here as we do this as well. Uh, I'm gonna start by just uh, getting this face here scraped in. Uh, on the dovetail, we will use the other piece we've already scraped as our master and uh, kind of go from there. So uh, to do this, uh, because it's easier to scrape flat than it is at weird angles, I, I just made a little cradle here out of some wood. I literally just screwed this down to my bench and I got this piece sitting in there so that I'm basically scraping this more or less level, which just makes life a lot easier. Uh, let's get in here and get going on it. So as I usually do with scraping, I'm gonna start with just a cross hatch pattern, going in here blind, and then we'll start uh, blueing it up. So I got my scraper sharpened up here, and we're just gonna go in here and put a cross hatch on this. I'm gonna come back the other direction at about 45 degree angle. This is what we did the first pass. And that'll get our cross hatch in here. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of take my hand scraper and get right up into that bottom corner down there. I can get in there better with this hand scraper than I can with that power scraper. And we will come back and do a uh, cross hatch here as well. All right, clean that out. And we'll take a stone here and deburr it. And let's blew her up and see where we're at and see where we need to go uh, to get this side scraped in. In a previous episode, we scraped in the dovetail side of the cross slide here that goes onto this piece. And um, what I want to do is I want to use this as a master. I'm trying to match this piece here uh, with the scraping job. So we're just going to use this piece to actually blew it up with. So I put some dye on that. And what I'm gonna do is just rub this back and forth on here a couple of times. And we should be able to see where our areas of contact are. And it looks like right now, I'm mainly just getting a big smear in there, but I can still see the, where the high spots are gonna be. So let me go ahead and pull this out now. And we will move this back over here where we can see what we got to work with. This little cradle that I'm using to hold this with, I just cut them out some pieces over on my bandsaw, and as you can see, it just kind of fits right down in there. And that gives me the right angle to, to work with. So you can kind of start to see what's going on here. We're making some contact. It looks like we're hitting kind of hard down in the bottom. Um, of the piece over there, it's actually the very top, but down in the in the very bottom, I think that just may be more of an ink smear where I had a little bit too much ink down there. But nonetheless, I'm a little bit high in that area. I can see where I'm making contact all the way across. Looks like we're making a little bit heavier contact on the front side over here than on the back. So we're just gonna come in there and knock those areas out and uh, continue on this process of back and forth, back and forth until we get a nice uh, pattern. So let's see, I finished up going the other direction last time. So we'll just come in here 
and I'm just working on those areas where uh, we got ink transfer. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little cross hatch on this. I can tell where I just straight. I'm roughing at this point in time, so uh, I'm not too worried about taking too much at this time. Once we get down a little bit farther, we'll just make single passes. But uh, there you go. We will clean this up and do another ink transfer. Deburr it. Do another round of uh, bluing up here. So I got it where this is the side that I'm inking on the back side. I'm gonna pull it in. We'll just uh, slide it back and forth and see what transfers. And after round two, I already see some improvement. We're actually getting contact almost all the way across. Still a little bit light back in here, but uh, we may, we're, this, this looks like it may get lucky and go fairly quickly on this side. So, all right, let me get my scraper and uh, I think I'm just gonna make a single pass this time and we'll blue it up again. I'm really now just kinda concentrated on those marks in there for these ink transferred and trying to leave the other areas alone. Make another round here. Made a couple more passes and getting a little bit closer. I'm liking the way this is turning out. Um, it really doesn't need a whole lot more and we're probably good enough. Let me uh, get this. I have shortened the stroke down on my scraper now where I'm not making as long of a stroke, getting more into the finishing mode, uh, letting me kind of really just concentrate on just those points in there where we've got some uh, black on there. Continuing on. One little trick when you're power scraping, trying to get in that back corner, normally you're cutting right on the middle of this uh, slope in the front. I'd kind of tilt it over. You have to be real careful. You'll gouge it, take some practice, but I'm working now more on this edge and I can get farther back into that dovetail. So like when I'm working in there, notice I kind of tilt it toward me a little bit and I'm able to get right in there. I'm on a shorter stroke now too. I wouldn't want to do that with a long stroke. Guys, I think I'm gonna call this side good enough. I've got pretty good coverage. That was a little bit thicker than I wanted on that side particular inking, but you can see the coverage is there. We got the spotting in there. It's gonna be fine like it is. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the other side and very similar process, but a little more complicated because now we gotta get the two sides parallel as opposed to just being scraped into surface. They've got to be perfectly parallel to one another as well. So I'll show you that process. I'm going to start by flipping the part over. I got the other side up and again, just put a cross hatch on there. Let's get a starting point and uh, we'll start from there. So now to check my parallelism, what I've got here is I've got two gauge pins. Now these are extremely accurate, been ground and lapped, so that they're exactly the same size from one end to the other. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm laying them into the dovetail and I've purposely chosen a gauge pin that's striking about halfway up uh, the slope here on the 
on the dovetail. And I got one on each side. And what I, this basically does is it allows me, I'm gonna measure across these pins, but we're making contact with all the highs on our scrape marks in there. Now, I remember with scraping, yeah, we call it getting it flat, but really what we're getting is we're getting the, all those individual high points when we're bluing things up or blacking them up in this case, all those little points, they're all in the exact same plane. And that is what's coming in contact with this gauge pin. And so you really wanna have something that's you know, fairly long, not too long, this is about the right size, but you wanna be make, making contact over multiple points in there. And we're just gonna take a micrometer now. Uh, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna get a measurement uh, right across those pins. And that's, I'm gonna call that 20, well, it's actually, what is that? Uh, 0 0.7, 0.798, right under 800,000. So I'm gonna call that, I'm just gonna call it 98. I'm just gonna write down the last uh, two thousandths of the, of the number on there. And we're gonna come down a little ways. We're gonna get another measurement. Call that one 98 as well. That's a good sign. That's telling me that I got the same measurement between those two. What I want is I want to have the exact same measurement from one end to the other. If that measures the same all the way down, that means we're parallel. If it's, if it's off and there's a taper, we're gonna to have to do some step scraping to get that taper out. So let's see where we end up here. Yeah, it's about the same thing there, 98, 98 and a half. Ollie's been running about 98 and a half. I'm halfway across. So far, everything's parallel. If that works out, I'm gonna be really, really lucky. And I'll take luck over skill any day of the week. And it looks like my luck's running out. So that's gonna be about 96 here. Drops off a little bit. Let's go down to the end and see what we get. And that was about 95. I think I'm gonna make a measurement between these two and kind of see about where that runs out. That's about 96 there. About 97, so we're gonna call that about 97. So it real quickly drops down right in here and then kind of tapers out. So what this means is, is that we've got three thousandths more on this end than we do on the other end. And to get that out, this was fairly uniform. It's about right in here. And then it drops down and then drops down again right in here roughly. So kind of, that's kind of my gradient there. 95, 96, 97, and then 98. So to get this out, what we're gonna do is step scraping. So we'll come in here and uh, I'll probably make a couple of passes in here and then I'll make a couple of passes down to this mark and then a couple of passes down to this mark. And um, then we'll come in here and remeasure everything, see where we're at and uh, we're just gonna keep doing that process until we get it. Uh, we're making the same measurement roughly from one to the other. I'm within a thou. I think I'll probably stop there and then we'll go ahead and start scraping for contact and then we can go back and fine tune it if we need to at the end. So 
that's where we're at. Let's uh, start our step scraping process. So again, I'm just doing this blind right now. We're just trying to get this end down a little bit more. I'm going to make basically two passes uh, in both directions to this mark. Then I'll make two passes in both directions to this mark. And then two passes down to this mark. And then I'll probably just do one pass the whole way. Like I said, we'll go back, recheck our measurements, and see where we're at. Got a lot of scraping to do. One pass. That's my two passes. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to go to the second line and we'll do that twice. There's one pass. There's two passes. Now, two passes to this point. two passes are there. I'm just going to do one pass down and back to the very end down here and uh, we'll go check our measurements again. So after step scraping I went back and rechecked everything and we got a little bit different pattern this time. We actually made some headway. We had about three thousandths total difference before. I'm down to about two thousandths now. And uh, like I said, things are a little bit different. So my highest point is up here on the end, 96, but it's only for about the first inch. And then it drops down to 95, and then roughly runs 94 all through here. And then on this end, it jumps back up to 95. So basically, high, highest, high, low. So we're gonna do a step scraping again, this time probably just one uh, pass back and forth each time. I'll start up here on the 96. I'll then do the 95 here and here, and that's gonna be it. So uh, let me uh, get it back over here, and I'm gonna do the step scraping, and we'll come back, bring you back to the end with the measurements. And in fact, I'll probably just do, keep, to continue doing the step scraping until I get it right, and we'll bring you back. So after that last round of step scraping, I've got everything reading within a thou. So still just a little bit. This is my highest up here on the very end. It drops down about a thousand, 19, 19 and a half, 19, 19 and a half, 19, 19 and a half at the end. So it is within a thousand. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to blue up that side and start working on just getting it in contact because I think that once we kind of get look at where our high spots are, it's, it's, some of this is going to straighten itself out and we won't be guessing, we'll be being a little more precision by uh, using the, the bluing on there. So that's my game plan. Once we kind of get pretty good marking from one end to the other, um, pretty good contact, I'm going to check it for parallelism again, make sure everything's cool. And uh, if so, we'll go ahead and scrape it on in. So we're moving down the path here. Give you an update of where we're at. I've been working on getting this side now flat and in a plane and uh, we've been making progress i've still got a little ways to go but uh, instead of using the cross slide as my standard on this side this is the side that the gib fits on and this machine has a flat gib and not a tapered gib so it's a little bit different setup than before i'm not worried so much about hitting that angle exactly right as i am just having it in a plane because there's just some set screws there's four set screws that hold a gib in place and it will actually adjust a little bit once 
side to the other. So I'm not, again, worried about getting a perfect fit up against the other side. I, what I am worried about is getting a flat, flat plane and making it parallel to the other side. So in this situation, what I'm using is just a straight edge and I'm going in here and just checking it for the plane. So I'm taking my straight edge, I'm using the dovetail side on the straight edge, go all the way to the bottom, drop it down. We'll rub this back and forth and uh, bring it out and I'll show you what we look like. So just take a quick look at where we are here. Um, you can see we've got pretty good coverage from one end to the other. Um, I don't know that I'm exactly through with this, although I could live with that just like it is. But what I want to do now is again, take it back over there, get my measurements for parallelism, make sure that none of that has changed too much since the last time before I take any more time to, to scrape this down any further. If honestly, if it matches up within a thousandths on parallelism, I'm probably just going to call it good. If not, we'll come over here and try to straighten out the parallelism and then work on getting our uh, contact back in there. So let's see what we can, let's we'll see what we can do here. So guys, here's my numbers. Uh, I'm actually happy because we came out better than I expected. Um, I got two sets of numbers on here. Let's look at the ones on the right. So this is what I'm calling zero. This is the lowest point in here. And uh, from this one to about, let me just draw some lines in here. So this is kind of my lowest point and it kind of goes like this. So this is zero. This is about a half a thou above that. And then the ends are about one thou high compared to the lowest point. And it's such a small area here in the low I mean, really from here to here, we just got one area that measured 17, the rest of them measured 17 and a half. I'm, for all intent and purposes, within a half a thou from one end to the other. I'm getting good coverage on the other side. It, it just all tells me that, that we're probably fine, just like we are. And remember, we're really just kind of hitting a area right in the middle. We know from the straight edge that we've got good contact. So uh, in reality, it's probably a little bit better than what we're seeing right here. But I'm happy with this. I'm actually surprised it came out without having to make some more adjustments, but happy nonetheless. So uh, I think that we're going to call this good. All right, everything is cleaned up. I'm gonna take my cross slide now and put it on here and Notice we got two dovetails here. This side over here, we of course use as the reference surface. This is the side that the uh, gib fits in. And I'll just show you guys here. This is the gib, it's a flat gib. It's not a tapered gib. That gib basically fits in this slot and there's some screws that you adjust to apply pressure to that. We know this is parallel now. Again, this uh, gib, when you apply that pressure, it's going to kind of, it's got a little wobble in there. It'll find that plane that we put on there with the other straight edge. So uh, I'm happy with how that is all going to work out. Now I will comment that this gib is broken. Uh, the end was broken off. It should be about that much longer. And I got to make a new gib. I've actually already kind of machined out a piece of stock. This is more or less the correct length. I uh, got to machine it down, grind it. Uh, we'll scrape it before we put it in there. That'll be my next video on this project. Uh, so I'm not quite ready to put all this back together completely, but uh, you can kind of see where we're at. But uh, very happy with how that turned out. I think this is gonna work great. And uh, we should have a good cross slide ready to go here. Well, there you go. One more bite out of the elephant, one step closer to having uh, this machine ready to go back together and hopefully be making some chips with it. Uh, excited. So I uh, got to make that gib and then re get this thing reassembled, be ready to go back onto the machine. So anyway, thanks for joining along. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you picked up a few little tips there. And uh, like I said before, I think, I think we're pretty much done with the scraping. I will have to scrape my gib when I do it, but uh, I'll probably won't even do a video on that. It's just going to be good at, you know, I just scrape it over there on my surface plate basically and make sure it's nice and flat. But uh, other than that, I think we're done with the scraping on this job finally. And uh, like I said, getting closer to having it done. As always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon so you get some notifications if you haven't already. And uh, those thumbs up and comments are appreciated. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.